All right, in this video, I want to give a, an introduction to um, linear inequalities. Uh, so uh, let's see, what's an inequality? An inequality is a statement that two quantities are not necessarily equal. So prior to this, uh, we've been dealing with equations, right? Linear equations, so uh, one side equal the other side, so x equal to 5. We knew exactly what x had to be in order to make that equation true, for example. All right, so instead of having an equal sign like we did when we had equations, now we're going to have one of these four inequality symbols. This first one, right, that looks like this shape right here, means less than. And then if you put this little line underneath the less than symbol, you have this thing that means less than or equal to. So if the uh, symbol goes in the other direction, like this, uh, it means greater than. And then again with a line underneath it, it means greater than or equal to. Um, so we're going to use it for something, say, like 2 is less than 7. That's how you'd read that. 2 is less than 7. It's a true statement. right? You can think of the pointy part there pointing um, towards the smaller number or the open part there towards the bigger number. So 2 is less than 7. That's true. We also could have, say, negative 3 is less than or equal to negative 1. That's true. Uh, or what if we had, say, 7 is greater than or equal to 7? Is that true? It is true because it's, it's, it's an or thing here. 7 is greater than or equal to 7. Well, 7 is not greater than 7, but 7 is equal to 7. So this, this is true. Now what about 7 greater than 7? Well, 7 is not greater than 7. Right, so that's not a true statement. Right, so everybody see the difference between these last two here? Right, so it's important that we understand what these four inequalities mean uh, so we can deal with the inequalities. All right, so here's an example uh, where we have um, a variable involved. We have x is greater than 3 is how, is how you read that. So what that means is that uh, in order... Remember, we're looking for all the numbers for x that would make this a, a true statement, right? Well, there are lots of numbers greater than 3 that, that would make this true, right? Any, any number larger than 3, you know, 4, 5, 6, 1,000, any of those numbers. Take any of those numbers, and it makes this a true statement. So we have an infinite number of numbers that, that satisfy this inequality that make it true. We can represent this graphically by drawing a number line. All right, so draw the number line, and then... Um, Pick a spot on the number line. Say, well, there, that looks good. That's 3. So now, where are numbers on a number line greater than 3? Well, they'd be to the right of 3, right? There'd be all these numbers over here. So what you end up doing is shading this part of the line, right? And putting a little arrow on the end here to say, yeah, it goes on forever, okay? And then at the number 3 itself, we need to decide what, what to do with that. Well, there's a couple of ways to write it, and depending on your structure, uh, it'll depend on how they... Um, how they want you to write it. All right, so one way to, to deal with it is we have x is greater than 3. So 3, the number 3, is not greater than 3. Number th the number 3 does not make this a true statement. 3 is not a solution. So one way to handle that is we'll put this little open circle at 3 and say that what that says is that, all right, the th number 3 doesn't work, but everything to the right of 3 makes this statement true. All right? Another way to write it, though, is, say here's 3, we're going to shade out this way, okay, so there's all our solution. So instead of using this open circle, we use a parenthesis, like that, right? So the parenthesis is used to denote um, that 3 is not included. Both of these symbols, the open circle and the parenthesis, are saying, hey, this number 3 is not included, is not part of the solution, but everything to the right, because we've shaded that way, everything to the right of 3 is a solution. Right? Just depending on your structure, it'll depend on which one of these you end up using. Right? So let's do another one. Suppose we had this one. x is greater than or equal to 3 is how you would read this. Right? So draw your number line. And we'd say, all right, there's 3. And again, we're shading to the right. All right, so this time, 3 is a solution to this inequality. So 3 is included as part of the answers. So we're not going to be using an open circle. Instead of an open circle, there would be this 
called a closed circle. You can put a little dot, that's really what that means. A dot at three, and we shade off to the right. Okay? So the dot means that the number three is included. In the other notation, we would say, here's three, and we would use a bracket. Okay? Bracket like that. We'd shade off here to the right. And that bracket, right, as opposed to a parenthesis, the bracket means that three is included. All right, so um, I guess the things to keep in mind is that the open circle and the parenthesis both mean the same thing. It means that the number itself is not included, while the dot and the bracket, the square bracket, uh, would be um, the number is included. All right, so let's look at um, two more things. All right, x is less than negative 1. So we go to our number line, and we say, all right, here's negative 1. And since x is less than negative 1, we want all numbers that are less than negative 1. Well, where are numbers on a number line less than negative 1? Well, those numbers are to the left of negative 1. So we end up shading out in this direction. Okay. Don't forget to put a little arrow on the end to say that it goes on forever. All right. Now, since negative 1 is not included, we can use the open circle, right, like before, or we can use the parenthesis. I'm just going to start using the parenthesis. Right. And then for x is less than or equal to 1, uh, we'd say, all right, well, negative 1 is included, so we have a bracket at negative 1, and we're going to shade off to the left. So everybody see how we can write with the brackets? Again, if you were using the open and closed circle th um, ideas, then you would just have a closed circle here at negative 1, and that would be the same thing. All right, so now I want to talk about the following. We know that 2 is less than 3. Right? Nobody has a problem with that. So what if we uh, added 4 to both sides? So we have 4. If you had 4 to both sides, you'd have 2 plus 4 is less than 3 plus 4. We'd have 6 is less than 7. That's true, right? Okay, so that, that's good. No problem. We can add the same thing to both sides of inequality and everything. Everything's fine. And the same idea applies with subtracting. So say you have 2 is less than 3. You, know, you subtract um, f uh, 1 from both sides. And so we'd have 1 is less than 2. Mm, that's true as well. All right, so just like an equation, we can add or subtract the same number to both sides um, of an inequality. All right? But now what about multiplying? So we have 2 is less than 3. So if we multiply both sides by 4, we would have 8 is less than 12. That's true. So that's good. So now we can multiply right, both sides by, by 4. But what if we had... What if we multiply both sides by a negative 4? Right? Everybody see that? You're going to get negative 8, and you're going to get negative 12. Is negative 8 less than negative 12? No, that's not a true statement. So in order to make that a true statement, we have to reverse the inequality symbol around. Negative 8 is indeed greater than negative 12. And this is going to be the only difference between solving a linear inequality and um, a linear equation. Right? So let's make a little let's make a little note. When multiplying or dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative number, the inequality symbol must be reversed in order to give another true inequality. That's it. Everything else is the same. You can add, subtract um, both sides of uh, of an inequality by any number you want, and you can multiply and divide both sides of an inequality, just like you can with an equation. But the catch is this time, is if you multiply or divide by a negative number, then the inequality symbol must be reversed. You can multiply or divide both sides by a positive number, right, by a positive number, and that's fine. Everybody see that? Okay, you still get a true statement. It's when you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number that you must switch the inequality symbol around. All right, so that's the idea we need to keep in mind when solving uh, linear inequalities. Uh, whenever you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, then the inequality symbol must be reversed. We'll see more of that in the next video. All right, that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.